Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and this is our weekly TV news where we talk about pilots, shows in development, renewals, cancellations, all that good stuff. Uh, that's pretty much the idea of the show. Uh, and we've actually been consistently doing it every week now for about a month do, or so. John you know has been disappointed about this past month. What? Not a single get you know, not a single story has made me have to drink yet. That's true, we're in a weird kind of cycle because the, the, the regular networks are all working differently because of the pandemic, that, I guess. That, I don't know. What the hell, news? I, 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 have to, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it, we're going to have a TV news. We got some stuff this week. We got uh, adaptations of movies, two of them, in fact, to tick off the show. And then we got uh, various other bits and bobs throughout. Uh, renewals, cancellations, maybe the biggest and most shocking and tragic cancellation of our lifetimes was this week. So, I can't wait to know if this is one I saw, or if if I don't even know about this yet. So without further ado, we'll start off with some of the, the more bigger headline stuff before we go through the usual format. Uh, Mimic, the Guillermo del Toro movie from the 90s, uh, one of his uh, very few good films, may I add. I haven't seen it. I think Is that the one with the, the eyes in the hand? No, that's Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. Why am I putting that as Mimic in my know. brain then? No, Mimic's more of a creature feature. It's about these uh, insects that were developed to try and cure diseases, but they ended up Oh, yeah, yeah, mutating. I know it. Yeah. Uh, so this is from 1997. Uh, I, I made a bit of a dig there because I'm not a big Del Toro fan, but I do actually quite like Mimic. And... It's hit or miss for me. Like, there are some that I absolutely love and there are others that I, you know, bore me to death. Yeah. Well, he's not actually involved in this. <laughs> in fact, oh, I'm someone, shocked. Someone else is involved in this. That's because they want it to exist. They don't want it to be good. Oh God. The producing, directing the pilot is Paul W. S. Anderson. Ooh, I mean, it'll exist, right? Oh, it'll exist, yeah. I mean, it did made five of the six Resident Evil movies, so... <laughs> this, this, this is what I mean. Which, which look, lo- love or hate Del Toro, he starts a lot of projects that just go nowhere, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, an announcement from him is not any indication you will ever actually see the project. Uh, this here, m- maybe that would be for the best. I wonder uh, if it's actually that he has less projects that go nowhere than everyone else does, or if he's just bad for announcing them all, whereas everyone else just knows to keep their mouth shut until it's a sure thing. It's it's possible, because, you know, he's such a, an enthusiastic guy, right, if you listen to him in any interviews. He, he loves what he does. I wonder if he just, he can't help himself but talk about everything that he's involved in. Yeah, but... Uh... Yeah, so uh, Jim Danger Gray, who worked on Orange is the New Black, will write the adaptation. Uh, is the original film was based on the short story by Donald A. Wilhelm. Uh, it was, you know, the story was originally called Mimic as well. It revolves around genetically engineered insects who evolved, developing the ability to mimic their human prey and the race to stop them from taking over. It's a pretty solid B-movie creature feature, as Mimic. Uh how it works as a TV show. You know, Miramax TV uh, are, are behind developing this. Uh, no no idea of where it will end up in terms of, uh, you know, networks I can see or whatever. The, um, of the potential of how this translates to TV quite nicely. I could see it. I could see it. It's definitely Del Toro's attempt at doing an Aliens-esque movie, uh, right down to the fact that, you know, she's protecting a kid later on, you know, the main character mm. and all that stuff. But, yeah, I mean, it's not like... I feel like as a TV show, it inherently it, it 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 leans more body snatchers sort of angle. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a lot of early stuff in the film where the the kid who doesn't speak uh, sort of sees the, the you know the shadowy figure that turns out to be one of the insects, and because he plays with spoons and he makes the he tries to make the noise that it makes with the spoons. Uh, as you do, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I can I can see them doing a lot of that. I, I can see that I can almost see the the trailer for the pilot in my head. Of like this kid looking out the window and with the spoons and sort of yeah. playing that up. I, assuming they keep that. I mean, maybe. I mean, that's one thing they could completely change if they wanted to. I suppose. The only thing that's important is that you've got the insects. <laughs> but maybe, maybe that's the the wiser choice is don't do any of the characters. You know, don't do that story. Just do 
take the concept and run with it and do it as something original. Yes, but Paul W.S. Anderson's got a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, he's not writing it at least, but he's involved, which immediately makes me think it's going to be trash. So we'll see, but I'm not yeah. feeling particularly hopeful. The other movie that's turned into a, a TV show, and this one's actually kind of weird uh, timing wise, because I just happened to watch this movie randomly uh, on Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday. Oh. Uh, just, just randomly, I saw it on Prime, and I thought, oh, well, that sounds like a fun little idea. And then the very next day, this story of, like, oh, they're turning this movie that I'd never heard of, I might add. It's not like it's something that I'd heard of a long time ago. It was something I discovered on Prime. Okay, I'm intrigued to see if I've heard of this movie now, then. It's called Stay Tuned. I have not, but I'm into it. <laughs> so Stay Tuned, <laughs> so the movie, having just watched it this week, literally, by accident, uh, <laughs> I can tell you quite well what it is. It was John Ritter, uh, you know, great comic actor of the uh, mm-hmm. of the 90s and the 80s and even the early 2000s. And him and his wife, he, he's, he's always watching TV uh, to the point where his wife's about to leave him for it. And they are sold and... <sighs> They are sold a satellite dish and TV system by someone who works for the devil. And they're sucked out of the satellite dish. And basically they have to go through various channels surviving the different types of like worlds and programs they're going through. And Didn't let me Rick finish. and Morty do an episode of this? Well, kind of, but let me finish. And basically if they, if they survive for 24 hours, they get to go home and they get to live. If they do get killed in any of the shows in that 24 hours, then Satan gets their gets their souls and there's actually a little bit of a cabin the woods vibe because once because the, the guy who souls tells them this he ends up going back to like a control room where they're kind of watching all this stuff so there's, there's kind of a little bit of that in there and eugene levy's in there as well it's it's got a lot of references it's very of its time there's references in this movie a wayne's world uh, as a there's a parody scene of star trek the next generation there's you know it's all stuff of the era and you can see what they'd want to do with this I, almost to the point where i mean maybe it'll say here if, if they're planning this when i read it in a second but i can almost see each episode being just the, the entire episode will be in this one style of show and then it'll be one channel so to speak yeah well not even just one channel just one thing because yeah. one, one of the funniest things about the movie is that uh the kids who are left at home and this is all happening they'll be flicking through the channels and there's lots and lots of really uh funny like knockoff shows of real shows but they're all kind of twisted to be kind of evil sounding and i can't remember it off the top of my head there were so many but it was things like uh uh i think i'll just make up one in my head you know something like uh so you've got game of thrones say right so and this it would be like uh i can't think of one for that but (laughs) it was all like puns it was all like puns and sort of like turning them into something kind of silly or dark or like uh oh actually uh there was one that was kind of uh, uh, remember the old 90s like exercise video adverts you get and you get all the people in the balls and they'd be doing the moves and all that how can i forget <laughs> of course you remember right I do. yeah right there was a it was there was a it was that right but it was like a pun on the word exorcist it was like the exorcisist or something like that and the exercise routine had the woman spinning her head around, and then, and then at the very end, before they changed the channel, she's like, okay, now it's time to vomit. And then, then they changed the channel. It was, there's a lot of really jokey stuff like that throughout. So I, I could see them having a lot of, like, almost like fake ads or something, like interspersed <laughs> into the episode, just for, for these little goofy sure, ideas that yeah. they want to do. But, I can see how this functions as a TV show. Like you say, each episode is whatever yeah, gimmick that, they want that week. And because sometimes it's not like a narrative, like you know, some of them in the movie, like a game show or something like that. So you could have an episode where it's them on, I don't know, pick a game show. If they, especially if they can get the rights, like if they can actually pay or use one that's on the same network and say, "Hey, can we use this and have them actually be I on mean, the set of this?" If it's on a network, most networks have a game show or two, right? Um, yeah. It's easy free promotion, right? Essentially, it's cross promotion at that point. Yeah. So. This has come from Ian Goldberg and Richard Ning. And uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, the movie fault. I, I won't bother reading the description because I just told You've you just done it, yeah. what the movie is. Uh, so, yeah, there's not anything specific to how the show is going to handle it uh, in here. So, uh, my guess was as good as any. Uh, that would be the way I would handle it. And I, I think it's the, the logical way to handle it. But who knows? 
Yeah, it's, it's a super movie of its time, though. Not even just because of all the references, but even just the music, the font, the sense of humor, everything is is late eighties, early nineties. Worth a watch. I was yeah, it's worth a watch. It's not, it's not amazing, but uh, it's, it's solid enough watch for sure. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, stay tuned, which has been developed into a, a TV show. Uh, so on to the other stuff here then. Uh, Hunter's Amazon show with uh, Al Pacino has been renewed for season two. Uh, oh yeah, that exists. That existed, yeah. And it's been a little while since that aired, so I mean, this gives us a, you know, sometimes it Co- may take this long. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, and please do, because I, I, I may be. Wasn't that last year that that aired? No. No, was it? Th- uh, this year has gone on way too long. No, yeah, this was like February or March, something like that. This was... Joe, you know I in my head... You know, this year is split into you know, oh, no, pre and no, post Eileen. No, because that's not a Super Bowl ad. This was after the Super Bowl, so this was this was probably about March. Fair enough. I, I mean, I, I think it was before everything went to shit. Maybe because I, f- I mean, who knows? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, Feb- February, yeah. So Hunters is getting a, a season season two. Uh, so there you go. If you enjoyed it, then you get more. Uh, and then here's so here's the, the 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 sad sad news the the news that we'll all remember where we were the day we heard that this show was cancelled because it's it's uh it's hit people hard there's there's crying in the streets there's I do know what this is okay. there's there's weeping uh from 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 you know the heavens it's <sighs> we stand here today to to mourn Siren's been cancelled. sucks had three seasons there you go did it get three whole seasons we got three seasons yes uh moving on well, uh, the siren we have trailers for a few things with uh some premiere dates uh some of them pretty notable uh we got one for a ridley scott show that's coming from hbo max we talked about it before it's called raised by wolves uh so we got a trailer here it's coming september 3rd the premiere date i'll read the description here as well just before we talk about the the trailer uh, Raised by Wolves revolves around two androids tasked with developing human children on a mysterious virgin planet. As the Burg- Burgigan t- colony of humans threatens to be torn apart by religious differences, the androids learn that controlling the beliefs of humans is a treacherous and difficult task. So, the trailer is very expensive looking. There's a lot of mm. big budget effects. We're set in this, you know, future dystopian dystopia almost post-apocalyptic i mean well it says virgin planet so i guess it's kind of the opposite it's just there's nothing there yet but regardless yeah. it doesn't look very hospitable it looks kind of drab and this is it's like pre-terraforming <laughs> yeah uh, there's a lot of i mean it looks futuristic but it's very futuristic in a sort of like we have a small camp we have this i mean there's one shot of like a bigger thing but i assume that's either a flashback or maybe a big ship comes later or something i don't know uh hmm. But very stylized, uh, definitely not just. It looks like a movie. I mean, that's basically it, the. It does. It looked gorgeous. There's a point when things start happening about two thirds into the trailer. Uh, you know, when it, when it starts showing some more stuff, uh, I, I'm I'm kind of beating around the bush just in case people don't want to see the trailer for themselves. Um, that looked it really cool, and I was like, okay, you're kind of giving me something here of of what to expect in a way that i think the first half of the trailer while it looks really you know really pretty it's just a lot of cuts around environments it wasn't until the back you know half third where it started showing me stuff that was interesting Mm. um yeah i'm not sure like how i feel in terms of quality yet ridley scott obviously is kind of hit and miss He, he has his gems he has his classics even but he also has a lot of turds now i don't know how much he was involved in developing the the story and the script for this but uh he did direct uh, the first two episodes so he's not directing the whole thing it's worth, worth mentioning yeah. but he can he can definitely direct the hell out of something when he's given a good script yeah so it looks visually interesting and it, it, honestly it feels like a lot of the themes that are going on in here feel like a lot of the things that he wanted to explore a lot of the ideas he wanted to kind of <laughs> bring forth in his alien prequels uh, when it came to the androids and david but ultimately he had to kind of shoehorn it into a movie and no one wanted it because it wasn't the movie that they wanted from an alien film but conceptually in a property from scratch there's no problem with those ideas not necessarily 
so we'll see i mean part of me is worried that it'll just remind me too much of that movie and in itself prometheus and covenant specifically those two if it if yeah. it does it may just put me in a bad mood uh from scratch it's very possible i think the key takeaways though are hbo max are willing to spend serious cash here and uh i'm surprised because you know this is only a couple of months after launch i'm surprised that they didn't want this to be a launch show like this would have been a hell of a uh, you know a tempo launch just on the visuals yeah they wanted that yeah, they had one sh- well they had a lot of other types of show but they had one scripted show at launch and they they, mm. they clearly wanted to stagger everything out maybe that was just because it was more convenient because of the way the schedules were with shooting and whatnot but yeah uh so obviously i'm up I'm, well i won't say i'm optimistic i'm very interested and curious but uh with a re- reservation that very possibly i might hate the actual storytelling even if it does look very slick because yeah because i've been lured in before prometheus is one slick looking movie but it's just uh, yeah, not that oh good God, yeah. it, i'm intrigued um but this trailer has almost nothing from a, a plot perspective i mean if you hadn't read me that description there, I doubt I could have even told you that much based on this trailer. I got well, I got the sense from the trailer that there is at least this one android woman because there's at one point there's yeah. a there's like a more sort of like animalistic looking animatronic creature running around, and I think from the trailer I was getting the sense that that was actually just her with like without the the outer sort of I mean to use a sure. Terminator phrase without the uh, living tissue <laughs> over the metal endoskeleton mm. uh, i was getting kind of that that impression uh, and it does seem like it's going to be questioning like you know she's the one raising them but is she because i mean the whole the whole trailer kind of starts with her telling the story of the, the the you know the three uh little pigs what no nothing you just you, you look like you were struggling to remember there yeah I, well I was, I was i'll be honest i was trying to remember what the animal was because i couldn't remember <laughs> yeah uh, that's all that made me chuckle. Uh, so, yeah. So now we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's definitely very heavy in its tone. It does not look like it's going to be a lighthearted affair. It looks like it's taking itself very seriously, which may work for it if it if it knows what it's doing. But it could also be a hindrance if it ends up feeling really drab and like, oh my god, I wish it yeah, was just. Yeah, that's else. that's one of those things that once you commit to it, you have to nail what you're doing for it to pull it off, right? Yeah, you know, if you're doing that that mm-hmm. grim dark sort of atmosphere. But it's just under a month away, so obviously we'll definitely be checking this one out and seeing how it oh, is. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully this will be the first big HBO Max show that really kind of leaves its mark. And obviously it's weird because they also have HBO shows on HBO Max, so it's kind of weird that they do. I mean, they have Lovecraft Country coming. They've already got Perry Mason rolling out every week. It's not like they're devoid of content. It's just it kind of this be, weird overlap. It'll be really interesting to see from our perspective, something we've talked about a bit in the past, of does HBO Max content feel different from hbo I mean, content or is it just an internal divvying up we'll, we'll we'll take this you get that well i mean if it keeps looking like this sort of thing it might be just a case of hbo max actually looks bigger budget than hbo does and hbo doesn't look cheap no i mean this i mean westworld i think is a good example in terms of being stupidly expensive right and looking great i would say this maybe, maybe it's just the setting that helps that it's more alien right it's more removed this this looks more expensive than the early Westworld stuff. You know, that first season, which was, you know, record-breaking in its expenses. This looks like it costs more than that. More to the point, they've got a nice wide aspect ratio on this, judging from the trailer. So, uh, and it's true. I think HBO let something recently do a slightly, like, do the Netflix ratio, but I think I'm pretty sure it's like two, two, three, five to one from the trailer. So maybe it wasn't quite that, but I'd have to go back and check. But, yeah. uh, so, but maybe that's another thing we'll see here is they'll, they'll be allowed a bit more freedom with that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, it's not like they it's not like they have to get more freedom in terms of like mature content hbo is already known for that so uh we'll see and the other trailer we got this week uh is for the a show we talked about last week as well and that is ratchet this is the the prequel to one flew over the cuckoo's nest set in 1947 and this uh, of course is uh, ryan murphy produced uh, and it but, shows yeah yeah uh we have sarah paulson as a titular character and you know, she's the nurse in the, the obviously in the movie slash book. It's uh, I have to admit, I kind of hated this trailer, and I I thought, well, no, here's the thing, I thought it was a very well put together, stylish trailer, but it just felt like, it felt like a season of American Horror Story trailer. I mean, I, I don't know what a season of American Horror Story trailer looks like, but 
my problem with this, I'm not actually judging the quality of how a trailer was put together, more just that the entire time I was watching it, I'm like, I don't know if I need the mysterious, somewhat sexy and deranged backstory of Nosratcha to, at least, you know, from my experience with the character, which is the one flow of the cuckoo's nest movie, while she is kind of this complex character who has this sort of like underlying thing, you know, behind her eyes and her motivations and how she treats the patients is very fascinating in that movie. This was screaming to me of trying to make a prequel to the point where you have to jazz everything up and you're making everything super stylish. And I'm like, none of this feels anything like what I feel when I'm watching One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This is a completely standalone thing that just happens to feature a character. And Which I'm not, and I'm not saying might that they... be to its benefit in some ways if it can remove itself from that. Like, so people aren't thinking about that movie all the time while they're watching it and not drawing comparisons as heavily. I mean, I, I guess, but then why why have it be this character? Why not just have it be an original property about a nurse? It just it doesn't really make sense to me. It's kind of frustrating. And then on top of that, like even on its own terms, it looks like a Ryan Murphy show. And let's face it, with the exception of Scream Queens, I've disliked every single one of those shows. Yeah, I was just trying to think if I want to defend any others, and I don't really. If, if there's any Ryan Murphy property that I felt should be more toned down, it was this one. Like, I, I was expecting to see... Because the one of the cookers Nest is a very kind of like, you know relaxed palette it's a lot of whites a lot of beiges it's a lot of these colors and this is so vibrant which would striking be striking reds all over which, the place which would be fine if it was like a standalone thing where we'd never seen a ryan murphy thing before and it was like okay that's a bold choice the problem here is that i look at this and go this just looks like every other ryan murphy thing it wants to be bold and vivid in every way and that's what all of his stuff looks like it yeah i don't know uh my anticipation for this kind of plummeted to just expecting another ryan murphy pilot which i'm going to be very lukewarm on if not outright dislike and then on top yeah, of I'm... all that you've got the prequely you know Nonsense. idea yeah yeah, uh, yeah honestly I, I wasn't too concerned about the prequely stuff having no attachment you know i've, I've, I've mentioned i think last week I've, i don't really have any attachment to the movie i've seen parts of it but i, I get the concerns but i thought maybe it won't bother me as much because i don't care uh, from my own just, perspective but uh, then i watched this trailer and i was just like I, i'm not interested in this at all it's... i, I want to make something clear i'm not worried about how this affects the movie or I, and i'm not even worried about like what it is compared to the movie really or, or, or at least not in the sense that i'm compared bec- or i care because oh i love that movie so i don't want to see them do anything to it or sure. touch it or anything like that that's not really what's pissing me off here if, if pissing me off is even the right phrase to use but it's more that it's just another example of this. So mm. I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling the fatigue of, dare I say, the lack of creativity, the lack of, if you're going to do a prequel, if you're going to do something that connects it to this, then, you know what, I try and evoke the spirit of the thing <laughs> or yeah. something. No, I get what you I think for me, ultimately, though, is I was watching this and as I said, it's a well-cut, well-presented trailer, but I, I, I was feeling that, at a detriment to the show like i was feeling like you're being stylish you're being mm-hmm. overly stylish in that it feels already like this is all style and no substance and i don't need that this style that badly and i'm like okay i this just it feels like a ryan murphy project like i say i feel like this could easily be a trailer for the next season of american horror story and i believe you just changed a couple of the names yeah, th- this comes back to just remaking and sequeling and everything that doesn't need to be remade and sequelized, or, or in this case, prequelized. And I know some people really like Bates Motel, but that was kind of like, and I'm, Bates Motel's probably better than this, just from what I've seen of it, but that was one where I watched like three episodes and went, yeah, well, kind of good. I don't really need that five season backstory to <laughs> Norman Bates and Mrs. Bates. Like, a, like the movie completely works on its own. It doesn't need this. Yeah. So, yeah, Ratchet, I'm not feeling optimistic let's just say that that was mid-september i believe oh i just closed the tab i forgot to give you the date you're right i think it was like <laughs> september 14th or september 17th around that it came up at the end of the trailer yeah yeah, yeah. hi where are we uh <laughs> why is this not at the top of the article come on come on come on come on just come on. Uh, actually we had the date for september we had the date last week september 18th there you go 18th damn it that, that's that's why it wasn't at the top because that was news last week. that's why we had it in the news last week is because it had a date last week 
All right, uh, next up, we had a trailer for The Undoing, which is uh, sort of whipping us back to HBO, but HBO proper, not Max. This is a limited series from David E. Kelly, who, of course, was behind Sharp Objects and Big Little Lies. Nicole Kidman's back in this one. So, clearly, can, can you know, HBO likes being in business uh, in the, the adaptation of uh, novels and whatnot <laughs> with, with this guy, because, Ed, you know, you were into them, but... I, Lots I've of been, people are. I've been fairly impressed. So this is coming uh, on October 25th, and it is a limited series, as I said. Um, where's the uh, full description here? Just going down. There's a lot of list of cast before I get to it. All right. So the story centers around successful therapist Grace Sachs, played by Nicole Kidman, who is living with her devoted husband, played by Hugh Grant, uh, and young son Noah Jupe, who attends an elite private school in New York City. Overnight, a chasm opens in her life, a violent death, a missing husband, and in the place of a man Grace thought she knew, only a chain of terrible revelations. Left behind in the wake of a spreading and very public disaster, and horrified by the ways in which she has failed to heed her own advice, Grace must dismantle one life and create another for her child and herself. Now, that description is not the most exciting thing, really. Nothing about that is that interesting to me. The trailer... Or the, I should say, teaser trailer that they put out uh, this week, which is why it's here. Uh, I did think it was very stylish. I liked the music. It was just a minute long. There was very little dialogue. It was all about just kind of the emotion of whatever crime happens that spirals and they're trying to cover up because they're rich white people and how they're trying to like make it all go away. It all felt like it had this weight to it and this kind of dark feeling to it. Uh, so from a stale perspective, I, I was getting the mood. I was digging the mood in the teaser. There's not a lot to go on, but. Uh, given the past shows from you know the same creator, uh, there's, there's reasons to be into this. So that's coming October 25th. So yeah, you know, we're we're kind of mapping out HBO content for a little bit here. Uh, yeah, how much does that leave us after? Because obviously we've got uh, Lovecraft Country starting next week. Is it? I don't know if it's next week. I think I think it is. Uh, let me double check. Uh, yeah, that is on the 16th. So that is uh, yeah next week. Yeah, it's probably just after so, that then. Probably just after, yeah. So, yeah. there you go. That is The Undoing. Uh, next up, Ren and Stimpy is getting rebooted. Comedy Central of Greenlit, a new animated series of the Ren and Stimpy. Uh, I have nothing to add. I never watched it. Are you attached no. to Ren and nope. Stimpy? Anyway? Sorry. Got nothing. No? Uh, there you go. Uh, they, they also recently announced Beavis and Butthead a reboot as well. So Comedy Central are kind of getting into these... Uh, older animated comedies and bringing them back seems to be their thing right now so that is that uh, next up uh we got a comedy being sold to warner brothers uh, for tv development called born again virgin uh the premise this is exactly what you think it is she swears off men and sex <laughs> that's, that's that's the whole premise that sounds like a th- thrilling tv show i just i, I i'm not even going to read the, the text because that's all it was i, I read this can, earlier can you skim it and see if there's any reason i would have to drink for any of my rules and um, and if there is then you know enlighten me and then and read that sentence if not nah good. nah there's nothing okay, carry on there's nothing all right we'll move on there's not really much to say here uh, i just say the actress writer romy reiner is the one who's behind it uh it's a single camera comedy uh no network yet but it's warner Bros. television who is is doing the deed so that is that. Uh, perhaps a little bit more interesting. Uh, this was a sitcom that is uh, being rebooted, uh, or it's in development at least to be rebooted, that I actually saw very few episodes of. I saw like maybe a, a dozen episodes of this in the early hours of the morning because that's when it aired on the Comedy Channel back in like the I'm early 2000s. Very intrigued as to what this is. Uh, this is Who's the Boss? Oh, okay. I've seen right. a handful of episodes. Uh, with young Alyssa Milano as the daughter, Tony Danza as the as the the father. It was you know it was this uh, sort of two different half families who kind of live together in a series of circumstances, and uh, Tony Danza and Alyssa Milano are both on board to reprise the roles. So we're going to have you know Tony Danza as the old man and her as kind of the middle aged character, um, and their father daughter relationship uh, will you know kind of be the the anchor for this. So. This was a, a big show in the 80s. Uh, this was Alyssa Milano during her commando years, <laughs> as I like to think of. Uh, so, yeah, um, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this. At least with this one, you've got your two... I mean, the two people who are stars. Uh, 
And it's funny because, like, obviously at the time, I, I don't know if they realised that Alyssa Milano would be at least something of a star when she grew up. Obviously. Probably not. I mean, how how many you know people of her age at that time are in these sorts of shows, and you know how many of them become yeah. stars? You know, I mean, Alyssa Milano, because obviously she went on to do Charmed, and you know she's she's been kind of an advocate and all that for all the stuff. But um, so she's still kind of around. Uh, Tony Dan's as well. We see him pop up in things every so often. Uh, yeah. So, you know, um, as far I'm sure as they're both happy for some nice steady work. Yeah, I mean, I can't really be mad at this. I don't really. I mean, I'm not that attached to it either, admittedly. But I, yeah, I don't think we're necessarily the target audience here. Um, yeah. But I think that there is an audience for it. I'm sure it's a, you know, a popular show, or was obviously. Yeah. Uh, it seemed fine from the little I saw of it, but it, it wasn't something that I, you know, again, it was one of those ones that I caught occasionally because nothing else was on at two in the morning. Uh, that's yep. what was airing at the time. So, uh, there you go. That is Who is the Boss? Uh, which will take us on to uh, probably our first round. Actually, before I'll do this, I'll thank our patron producers here at this, this juncture. Uh, so thank you to our patron producers of Alison M. Fordyce, Tyler Hess, mm-hmm. Cindy Palisades, David Shaw, Bo- Shot. David Short, sorry David, uh, Bored Now, Zammer Jammer, Al Tribesman, Christopher Moy, and Brett Williams. They are all patrons at a $20 or above tier, which uh, is what makes them producers, uh, as the list would imply. But you can, of course, support us for much less than that. If you go to patreon.com slash TV, you can support us for as little as $1 per month and get some bonuses for your trouble. So go in and have a look and see if you're interested. And uh, thank you very much. But uh, yeah, so on to the, uh, the dramas here. So... Uh, another movie been turned into a, a TV show, A League of Their Own, which I've never seen. Uh, it's a Tom Hanks movie uh, about uh, uh, a female baseball league or team. I'll read the description. It'll tell me. <laughs> this is what a I good know. idea. That, that, this is what I know about it, just from you know pop culture. From yeah, that's about as much as I know as well. I've known. Yeah, um, baseball doesn't interest me enough to to watch almost any movie. Yeah, so this is a, a series order, though, specifically at Amazon, so it's, it's, it's good to go. So the hour-long series described as a fresh approach to uh, the classic about real-life All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. It will follow new characters who embody the spirit of a generation of women who dream to play professional baseball. The show takes a deeper look at race and sexuality, following the journey of a whole new ensemble of characters as they carve their own paths towards the field, both in the league and outside of it. Oh, oh that that's was personal yeah, professional. That was personal that, professional. There we you finally, go. It's only taken about six weeks of being back, but we got one. So that is, um, for, to me, that sounds like it's because this was a period piece, you know, because this was the movie was made in nineteen ninety, early nineties. Okay, <laughs> right? It was set in like the the sixties. Oh, I think it was further back than that. I think it was, was it uh, okay. I, yeah, I want to say it was like the forties or something that I was saying. But regardless, it was a period piece. Uh, yeah. That description sounded to me like it could say like a whole new generation. That might be a present day show. I mean, they could get away with it being a period piece, just a later period if they wanted yeah, to. Yeah, um, they could, yeah. And that would still, nothing in that description would be a lie. Uh, you know, they're talking about, um, they're talking about their racism and, you know, uh, sexuality. I assume they want to be on the cutting edge here and be, you know, as modern as they can. Uh, I think that would be the smart choice and yeah absolutely a fine choice tackling those subjects i mean i think you could do it really well either as a period because as a period piece you do it at a different time where maybe it's even harder for like to, to have those discussions which makes it maybe a more challenging topic to actually address or you do it in present day and you can make it a bit, maybe a bit more relevant to what's actually going. It, it, um, it depends what t- angle you want to tackle it with yeah I think there's a there's a danger of when you just present it as a period piece it's almost like hey this is when this was a problem and you know and that's why we need it to be a period piece almost to to tackle those things whereas yeah which is the wrong know. sentiment to go about completely right yeah. yeah so yeah amazon have ordered this to series so this is something that we're, we're going to see uh at some point uh i mean pitch was pretty good <laughs> which is the, the closest thing i have to compare it to so yeah, I mean, that is literally the, the most baseball thing I've ever watched. Like, of anything. You know, one episode of that is, I think, I don't know if I've ever watched a single baseball movie. Oh, I like, have. Not one. Come on, The Sandlot. Come on. It's, it's, no, it's, 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 never, never interested me. Uh, fine, but Sandlot's a 
quality, quality thought. No, I'm, I, I'm not. In, I'm not saying any of them are bad. I'm sure there are good ones and bad ones, but never interested me enough. Hmm. All right. Uh, I, I don't have much attachment to baseball. I will say it's better than cricket, though, and move on. So, how dare you? This, you know what? I'm going to give the Americans this one. Baseball, vastly superior to cricket. Cricket is only good for curing insomnia. The end. All right. Moving on to the the next thing. You're also, a ter- terrible human being. Also, everyone looking, everyone playing cricket looks stupid. Like everything they're wearing, the stupid hats, that the bat looks stupid. Everything about cricket is stupid. What do you mean the bat looks stupid? It's a bat. It looks stupid. It's this weird rectangle. Yeah. It's stupid, and the stupid little, like, little fence you have to knock down with the ball. Wickets. See, it's even a stupid name. The wickets. <laughs> and you've got the th- oh god, what's the name of the thing on the top of the wickets that you've got to knock off? So you don't even know because that boring. Because it's it's been a while since I've had to think about it. I don't watch that much cricket. But you can hit the wickets and not knock the thing off the top if it stays balanced, Does and it? then it doesn't actually count as, as as a you know an out. There's a reason why when something doesn't land, we say crickets. <laughs> that is not the reason, and you know it. <laughs> that that is a perversion of the English language, right there. <laughs> That was a quality joke, and you know it. Everyone knows it. You all know it. That was a quality joke. Perversion of language. Will not stand for it. <laughs> yeah, and cricket's a perversion of my boredom. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the next thing. We've got uh, Boss of the Beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm definitely into this one. Uh, a TV show based on a, a magazine article with the same name. Uh, from oh, New- thrilling. Yes, uh... So, Darren Aronofsky, of all people, and Pro- Protozoa Pictures have won the television rights to David Gavi's Herberts, 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 <laughs> why can't I speak today? Uh, his article from New York Magazine. So, it's, uh, the search is underway for a writer. Uh, so, Aronofsky's only producing, I mean, maybe he'll end up directing the episode. That doesn't sell it something that Aronofsky would direct, but who knows. Y- you uh, never know with him. Yeah, so, yeah, so Herberts, June 23rd, 2020 article. So it's recent. That's pretty recent. <laughs> uh, published New York Magazine's uh, Intelligencer. Oh, I've never seen that variation of the word before. Uh, chronicles the hopes, dreams, and scandals of the New York City Lifeguard Corps. The Lifeguard Corps. <laughs> Corps. Uh, you sure this isn't a CBS I, show? I mean no disrespect to lifeguards. You provide a valuable, necessary service, right? Very important work. But calling it a core is really funny to me. That's the most American thing I've ever heard. No, the lifeguard oh, core. I guarantee you only Americans call it that. <laughs> um, over the last 40 years. Uh, the article has a particular focus on the uh, tumultuous career of Peter Stein, who has run the NYC lifeguard core for four decades. There it is again. I'm just, I imagine them all walking around with their own version of a Green Lantern ring. Like, we're the lifeguard core. We are the core. <laughs> like... I feel like an organization like that should be, you know, the National Life Guards Association, you know, something. They, they feel like an association or a union, not not a core. Mm. And what are your debts? <laughs> and soap trunks. Keep going. No one will drown under our watch. Let those who struggle to stay afloat beware our talent we're your human boat done (laughs) (laughs) i'll be honest i was expecting worse i'm not not saying it's good but it wasn't the complete train wreck that i was hoping for Uh, and anyone who does nothing about green lantern is like what the hell is going on why why is he (laughs) saying some sort of weird poem about lifeguards Oh dear. So yes, boss of the beach, which is, I don't know, I, I, I I'm a grittier Baywatch, I guess, is what I'm getting. I, I just, I don't know how this isn't a CBS show. I mean, I end up a CBS. We I mean, it might what, be, but yeah. it, it just sounds like immediately like that's all my brain can picture it as. All right, next up, Apple's ordering something. Apple's. Oh, they're or- still going. 
yeah. Apple's other drama series from uh, Team Downey and Adam Perlman. Team Downey being Robert Downey Jr.'s little shindig. So it is the Untitled Team Downey and Adam Perlman project. <laughs> oh, real creative. Based on an article. Oh, is that all these articles getting turned out of things? Uh, Michael Lisa's Toronto, Toronto, Toronto Life article, The Sting. For some reason tonight, my vowels are just go- like, you know, it's an O, now nah, you're going with an E. Uh, I don't they're know they're a bit jumbled. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why that's happening tonight. It follows a frustrated Canadian detective. <laughs> I can't take this seriously already. Right? <laughs> very friendly detective. He doesn't like beat people up for information. He just asks very politely. He just apologizes until they give up and tell him. Yes. Uh, yeah, it follows a frustrated Canadian detective who takes on a decade, decades-old cold case in hopes of winning a confession and becoming a hero. So he goes and asks for a confession nicely, <laughs> and the killer just after all his time, like, yeah, you know what? Ambitious for a Canadian, yeah. isn't it? Wanting to be a hero. Okay, I, you know, I, I will make fun of the manners. I, I am not going to belittle Canadians in general because you know what, Canadians are fine people, and uh, let's just say. Canada and Scotland have got a lot in common, all right? We're both right above <laughs> certain types of country. We both know the pain. There's a, sh- there's a camaraderie between Canada and Scotland. Not the French part, admittedly, but the rest of Canada and Scotland. Real Canada. <laughs> yes, real Canada. Do you know what? French Canada and then the Gaelic parts of Scotland, they can they can mingle. <laughs> they can go mingle somewhere. <laughs> up in the cold parts. But uh, the rest of us, there's a camaraderie, and I will not stand for... Do you know what, I, I, I make fun at the Canadians' expense, but, I mean, better than America, let's be honest. <laughs> you... You're just getting to ice hockey this week. I feel like you should not be making fun no, of Canadians. No, no, I've been into ice hockey for a long time. I just okay. haven't been able to watch uh, American leagues in the UK until I found a way this past week, and now I'm very excited about it. Oh, very good. Uh... God, comics is going to be a nightmare with you two. Both want oh, to yeah. Uh, it, th- th- there might be a new bonus bit. Oh, no, 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 uh, I'll be shooting that down immediately. Um, also, there's plenty of nice Americans as well. Why must you just bl- point blanket and salt entire countries full of people? To be fair, I do it with every country, so there, so it's it's fair to everyone. Yes, and every time I have to play clean up, because before the angry comments come in... <laughs> uh, here all right uh so where's the description of this oh i would have told it it was the canadian thing yeah oh i never finished i never finished the case quickly spirals out of control when the undercover cop attempts an elaborate sting adding play acting cops taxpayer resources and an unexpected friendship with a peculiar target so the ending kind of maybe gives you maybe more of a bit of personality to the show that there's a bit of an elaborate like wacky sting operation going on which maybe maybe this will have something a sense of humor i mean i I could see it uh the Mm. article was called the sting which is and i can see why they don't want to call the show that because there's a movie called the sting Uh, there's there's too much association yeah yeah i mean they could probably get away with it to be honest yes uh honestly just call it uh the canadian sting the (laughs) canadian i was gonna say the canadian detective i I feel like that'd have enough of a a ring to it that people would be (laughs) Probably, yeah. Uh, uh, so that'll it, take us on to the next thing, uh, which yeah. when my page reloads because I got a 429 too many requests there. Uh, uh, shambles. Uh, hey, this has only started happening in the last couple. In fact, the next two tabs are saying that as well. You, a, need, you need to get a better browser. This is a deadline, I think. They're just not handling it. This is the only website that does this with me. Uh, too many so, re- it's going to be you requesting deadline too many times. You're, you're crashing their servers with all your tabs at once. They're not equipped for it. Well, they should upgrade. Get some fiber. <laughs> Get some fiber installed in the Deadline headquarters. Worth Next try. up. The Expanse actor, Thomas Jane, is going to star and executive produce a drama, a crime drama called Tropo, a series adaptation of New York Times bestselling author Candice Fox's Crimson Lake novel. So, writer Yolanda Ramke who worked on Netflix's Cargo. That was the uh, the, the baby zombie, or the zombie dad movie, uh, starring, what's his face from The Office? Uh, 
I don't remember this. But, well, that's because I'm pretty sure I've watched this movie. I don't remember it existing. I don't even know who you're talking about from The Office. Tim from The Office. What you call him? Oh, um... Martin Freeman? Freeman, yeah. There you go. Uh, anyway, so uh, the adaptation of, Crim uh, of Crimson Lake, uh, the first novel of Fox's gripping contemporary crime series set in Queensland, Australia. So, different setting. Uh, Is this uh, an excuse for me to make fun of Australians as well? <laughs> in Tropo, Jane stars as an ex-cop falsely accused of a disturbing crime who escapes to the tropics of far north Queensland where he becomes entangled in a newly formed private investigations agency. So he, he goes on the run, becomes a PI. That's just kind of interesting. <laughs> the series is slated to go into production later this year in Australia. Uh, Rebecca, is, is Thomas Jane Australian? If he is, I didn't know that. Yeah, I assumed he was American. But it's the sort of thing where I'm like, if you tell me he's actually Australian, I'll be like, you know what? Maybe I could buy it. I feel like there's a lot of uh, Australians that fall into the same category as a lot of British actors in that they can put on an American accent for years, and I just you, and you wouldn't know unless you know. I was watching an Australian movie this week called Patrick, and what was notable about it is other than one character, like I I couldn't tell the difference between a lot of their accents. They all sounded like they could equally be English to me. Like mm. so, if they if they were Australian actors, they had very soft accents. Mm. Very soft. That's true. No, he he is American. I I just checked. Okay, so maybe maybe he's just an American living in Australia. Uh, or we're going to see Thomas Jane try to pull off an Australian accent, which may oh, actually please. Be, may actually be worth the effort. So yeah, honestly, this and the last show both sound super networky. Yeah, but at the same time, if they end up somewhere else and it's actually really sort of like well written, then who knows? Maybe it could be something. But... Yeah, the, the the premise that sure, if you if you put it on you know a Netflix or you know somewhere like that, sure, maybe it's not. But in in premise, they sound prime for network. Next up, AMC has optioned the rights to Sorcerers, a novella by co-writers Maurice uh, Brodus and Otis Whitaker, and featuring illustrations by internationally renowned artist Jim Mafud. That is a great last name. His last name is Mafud. Well, that's cool. Do you know how many times I've had like takeaway arriving and I've yelled out when the doors went, Mafud! Like... Probably every time you have takeaway oh, arriving often. with that accent. Very often. Uh, so, yeah, maybe it's only funny because I'm Scottish, and that's how I'd say it. But, yeah, I think it probably is. Uh, but, yeah, the short story is a psychedelic urban fantasy about a 30-year-old man from Harlem who comes into his own as a hip-hop-inspired sorcerer. That's just the first sentence, but, I mean, that's... Oh, I'm I'm 100% in. This This sounds like a, a lot like phonogram. This, so. this, this, uh description is quite long i wonder how much this is spoiling of the short story but it follows malik hutchins a black sheep to one of the most successful families in harlem uh malik couch surfs with relatives parties with his girlfriend and ghostwrites rhymes for our local rappers for a few bucks to finance his lifestyle but when cocky malik sells two warring rappers the same verse he paints a target in his own back and then his uh, then on his deathbed, Malik's beloved grandfather, Pop Pop, reveals that Malik is a sorcerer. Pop Pop's one of those things where it sounds odd in my accent. You, you kind of need the, uh, the American accent there to make that, that sing. Yeah. Uh, Malik is thrown headlong into a quest that winds through the streets of Harlem. Uh, oh, sorry, I missed a really important sentence there. <laughs> Pop Pop reveals that Malik is a sorcerer and the great tradition of an African sorcery born in the plains of Rift Valley before the beginning of time. That was a really important sentence, I think, for what was about to come next. Yeah. Uh, Malik is thrown into a headlong quest uh, that is uh, through the streets of Harlem, uh, the rural south, and places much farther beyond uh, places that he's only visited in dreams. Now it's Malik's turn to step up and take his place as the wielder and guardian of ancient magic passed down through generations in his order to protect the family, the people of Harlem, and the world from the forces of dark magic connected to the worst aspects of American history and the fearful creatures it has unleashed. That's interesting. I feel like that last part was making me think that they're going to tie in a lot of like real world things to dark magic to sort of make it, you know, kind of like address like serious topics, but through the, the kind of the, the guise of like, oh, magic's behind it. And I can, I can yeah, see there's what a, doing. There's a fine line to draw with that um, mm -hmm. because you don't want to just you know, wave away 
the actual problems and just be like, well, it was magic. It's fine. It's evil shit. You, you know, um, you know, a lot of these stories, uh, at least in my experience, because I've, I've read, you know, I've not read this, but a lot of these that deal with those sort of topics, it's a lot of the time it boils down to, you know, the character thinks it's, you know, dark magic, but it's, no, it's just humans are terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that tends to ring a bit truer and doesn't kind of undermine reality, which I think is, is something you've got to be careful of with these stories. Yeah. Um, but I'm into this. There you go. So that is uh, Sorcerers. Uh, they may get jazz up the title a little bit, or maybe they'll want the boring title. It's just one word. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to get you to send me the info on that afterwards so I can go and find the short story. Uh, so then the final story of the week is a new miniseries coming to Netflix with Adam McKay and Amy Adams uh, pairing up for it. And it's about three women who are linked with Walmart, which sounds really boring when you <laughs> you say that. It does. Three people who are linked with Walmart. Uh, so, right. So, da, 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 right. So, Netflix of uh, of of Nabdas, uh, limited series, uh, based on sorry, even the title of the show. Sorry, is Kings of America. Uh, it tells the stories of three powerful women whose lives were inextricably, inextricably linked and intertwined with the world's largest company, a Walmart heiress, a maverick executive, and and a longtime Walmart saleswoman, and preacher who dared to fight against the retail giant in one of the biggest class action lawsuits in US history. So, right away, Adam McKay, you know, he, he worked on uh, The Big Short and stuff like that. I feel like... And Vice kind of and falls Vice. into that vein as well. Yeah. So you can kind of see where this is going to go tone-wise. And you got Amy Adams being there uh, to to be in there as, as kind of the big lead. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's has potential. Yeah, I think if you take away his name, I'd have been being going, you know, what, what the hell is this? Why do I care? Uh, I don't think even Amy Adams on her own would have been enough to, to salvage that for me. But, you know, they say you know, the the style of that, that, you know, he brought to, you know, Vice and, you know, you know, they say the big short and kind of taking these, uh, especially the big short, you know, relatively boring things and putting some genuine style into it to, to give mm-hmm. it a, a tone uh, makes me actually have some some hope for this being quite good yeah well, there you go it depends how much is involved yes that is the uh that is the news for the week uh hopefully some in some interesting stuff in there uh you know but there you go that's pretty much it uh of course you can uh check out all the reviews we've been putting up uh doom patrol season just finished this week and the review of that will definitely be up by the time this goes up for sure uh, you can also see us working through Umbrella Academy Season 2, which we're not super hot on. We, we actually just recorded Episode 4 of that. Uh, that should also be up. Episode 4 that is by the time this goes up as well. So check out that too if you're if you're been watching that or you're wanting to see some opinions yeah. on it. Uh, we also talk- tried Lower Decks. Star Trek Lower Decks, yep. Yeah, uh, the first episode, which is was never going to be continued because it's a, just a 20-minute comedy. But uh, we did check out the first episode to see what it's like. Uh, this coming week, we do have the season finale of, in fact, the series finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., as well as the season finale of Stargirl. So we have a lot of uh, changeover in terms of the shows that are being covered right now. Uh, but we do have starting, as Connor mentioned earlier, uh, it'll be after the news again, though, admittedly, but uh, Umbrella, uh, sorry, Umbrella Academy, Undiscovered Country is launching uh, next weekend. So, yeah, so there's st- stuff happening, stuff coming, so check out stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, just to sort of uh, outro the show then, uh, please do like. Like is super important on YouTube and it uh, helps more people find us. YouTube will sort of pimp us out a little bit more in the recommendations and that kind of thing. It's the easiest way to support us uh, and the freest way to support us, I suppose, as well. Uh, but you can also support us financially over at patreon.com slash TV as I mentioned earlier. Uh, get us on Twitter at mailed underscore for channel updates. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?